Okay, here's the prompt we've been working with from Think Circa. As Project Plie or Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Misty Copeland's work to change the perception of black women in ballet. It doesn't matter which one you pick, and even if you decided to say both of them had an equal amount of influence, that's fine. You just have to support it in your writing. One of the things I've seen from students is on the right. It begins with the claim. And so at a minimum, you're going to be going to begin with your claim, which is an answer to that prompt, the question of which has had the most influence. Then you're going to give textual evidence. You're going to explain your textual evidence, a counter argument, and then a conclusion. Now the counter argument, and some students will write this all in one paragraph. Uh, so here's what a one paragraph answer that meets those minimum requirements would look like. Project Plie had more influence on Misty Copeland's work than Raven Wilkinson did. Wanting to give other children access to ballet, Misty started work with Project Plie, which focuses on expanding diversity and inclusion within the world of classical ballet. Misty explains that she wants young dancers to see that she's real, that she's not just this celebrity they only see on TV. She wants them to see that they can be a part of the ballet world just like she is. Although Raven Wilkinson was important to Misty Copeland, that's where her influence ended. She did not go on to influence the next generation of dancers. Misty Copeland's work with Project Plie helped show the world that ballet was not exclusive to white dancers and that anyone willing to work hard for a dream can achieve it. On the left of your screen is if you were to really perfect your essay writing, it would look like this. You wouldn't just start with your claim. You start off with an entire introductory paragraph that has a hook. Um, we also call it a lead. Then it has this transition and then your claim. In the seventh grade, we called it a thesis. A whole paragraph that starts off broad, usually with a text to text connection or a text to world or a text to self, some bigger picture that gets your reader interested, and then transitions to your thesis, your claim, which is the answer to the prompt. Then you'd have two body paragraphs. Uh, the first body paragraph would support your answer. You'd have a topic sentence, textual evidence, an explanation of the evidence, and then a concluding sentence. In Things Circa, your third paragraph can be the other side's point of view. When you are going to counter argue something, when you're going to rebut someone's argument, you need to tell the reader what their argument is. And it would be written the same way. A topic sentence, evidence, explanation, and a concluding sentence. So you might say, um, other people feel that Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Mr. Copeland's work. They believe that, and you'd find whatever your source says that gives this other viewpoint, you would explain it and then a concluding sentence. And so your final paragraph, your conclusion could begin with your rebuttal. Your rebuttal, even though there are those who believe that uh, Raven Wilkinson had a bigger influence than Project Plie, the truth is Project Plie was the avenue that Mr. Copeland used to da -da 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 -da, whatever the case may be which brings in the restatement of the thesis and then the concluding point which you know it's the kind of the so what what was the importance of all of this thanks to Mr. Copeland's work uh, there are now more uh, dancers of color in ballet all right so when you write yours you want to make sure that you have at least this minimum structure on the right, which would be, um, you know, a short essay. But at best, this on the left, we've actually got four paragraphs going on rather than just one. So as I thought about this, I kind of went with the idea that you can't discount Raven Wilkinson. 
her influence on Misty Copeland led to Misty Copeland's work with Project Plie, which then helped shape the next generation of dancers. So I decided to use both of them, which means that I won't even have a counter argument. My introduction has three parts to it. Yours should too. In red, I put my hook, my lead, my personal connection to Misty Copeland's story. When I was in the first grade, a group of kids told me they didn't want me to play with them. They even got the teacher to tell me to go away. That's my earliest memory of being made to feel like I don't belong. Now I'm transitioning to Misty Copeland. I'm not the only person who has been made to feel that way. Misty Copeland was told she wasn't right for ballet, that she didn't have the right body type. But then she became the first African-American prima ballerina in American Ballet Theater. And I go to my claim now. The African-American dancer Raven Wilkinson had a great deal of influence on Misty Copeland in her er effort to help dancers of color feel like they belong in the world of ballet. Without her influence, Misty Copeland would have never gotten into ballet in the first place. Now, in your Think Circa article, you're going to have to find the stuff that talks about Raven Wilkinson and the stuff that talks about Project Plie. So I've just pasted it in here, and I particularly liked this quote right here from Mystic Copeland. And so in Think Circa, I highlighted the whole thing, but I put a note saying to use this quotation in my paper. There's a little bit more about Project Plie. This is the most direct reference to Project Plie, and there's a little bit more that I could have stretched it to include too, because it showed the effect of Project Plie on the other dancers. But my body paragraph has four parts to it. In red is my topic sentence. Blue is my evidence, that's my textual support. Purple is where I explain what that quote has to do with the whole thing. And finally, I conclude showing how it all works back together. Raven Wilkinson's influence on Misty Copeland began when Misty saw her in a documentary. This black woman came on the screen and it was the first time that I felt like I recognized myself in another dancer and it was so powerful. Before this, Misty had only seen white ballet dancers and had been told that she wasn't right for ballet, that she didn't belong. Once she saw another dancer of color, she knew that if Raven Wilkinson could do it, then she could too. By becoming the first African-American primary dancer for New York's American Ballet Theater, Missy showed the world that race was not a barrier to being successful in the world of ballet. Uh, I just felt that with this prompt, both Project Plie and Raven Wilkinson were crucial to Misty's story. And so I began with a transition sentence, but Misty's story doesn't end there. Wanting to give other children access to ballet, she started work with Project Plie. This program focuses on expanding diversity and inclusion within the world of classical ballet. Misty explains that she wants young dancers to see that she's real, that she's not just this celebrity they only see on TV. She wants them to see that they can be a part of the ballet world just like she is. And then your conclusion, uh, if you had the uh, opposing viewpoint in your third paragraph, you can begin your conclusion with your counter argument to make for a slightly longer conclusion and longer in a good way. But because I didn't do that, I have a counter viewpoint, the opposing viewpoint. I just am now going to wrap the whole thing up. Mr. Copeland is a role model and inspiration for anyone who has ever felt like they didn't fit in. The influence of Raven Wilkinson led her to start Project Plie so that she could open the doors of ballet to the next generation of dancers. Her story of success proved that ballet was not exclusive to white dancers, and that anyone willing to work hard for a dream can achieve it. And here's what it looks like all put together. So compare what you've got to this, and keep in mind where you are in your writing progress. Have you written one full paragraph that has all the parts to it? Or have you written a multi-paragraph essay? This is a model 
for you to compare yourself to and see how well you're doing. If you have questions, send them to me via Google Classroom and I will help you out. Thank you.